Mishnah Bura, the laws of Pesach. For, uh, chapter 429, that one should not fall on his face in supplication during the entire month of Nisan. Item 1. One should inquire about the Halachot of Pesach already 30 days before Pesach. Point 1. One should inquire about the Halachot of Pesach. This we derive from the fact that on Pesach Rish, on the first Pesach, Moshe, in, Moshe enjoined the people about all the Halachot relevant to Pesach Sheni. Correspondingly, for other Yamim Tovim, it is also necessary to expand the relevant Halachot 30 days beforehand. See the Bior Hagra, which is of the opinion that for Shavuot is, it is sufficient to expand the Halachot from the first of Sivan. There are authorities who say that the obligation to begin 30 days beforehand only applies as regards Pesach. Then it is because there are many halachot, halachot involved, such as the Halachot concerning the grinding of wheat, the baking of the matzot, the purging of the utensils, and the disposal, disposable, disposal excuse me, of chametz. If these matters are not done before Pesach in compliance with the Halachic requirements, this cannot be remedied on Pesach. This does not apply in the case of other Yamim Tovim, so that for them it is sufficient to discuss the relevant halachot a few days before. At any rate, all, all authorities are agreed that on Yom Tov itself one must discuss and expand the relevant halachot in the case of every Yom Tov. This is stated at the end of Megillah. Moshe ordained for Israel that they should inquire about and expand the halachot which relate to the particular day the halachot of Pesach on, on Pesach, the halachot of Shavuot on Shavuot, and the halachot of Sukkot on Sukkot. Point 2. 30 days before Pesach. One should begin from the day of Purim itself. It is now the practice to expand on Shabbat HaGadol, when every Pesach does not fall on that Shabbat, as if so it is necessary to advance the discourse to the previous Shabbos and on Shabbos Shuvah. The fundamental purpose of the discourse on Shabbat HaGadol is to teach the public the way to serve the Lord by instructing i.e. they should be taught the laws of purging utensils, disposal, disposable, excuse me, disposal of chametz, and baking matzot and other halachot relevant to Pesach. Similarly on Shabbat Shuvah, the fundamental purpose of the discourse is to expound to the people the halachot of Yom Kippur and of the festival of Sukkot, apart from expounding to them about the matter of repentance. If, however, discourse only consists of, of mere theorizing or homily, they do not fulfill their obligation through it as regards the requirement to inquire about the laws of Pesach. It is nevertheless a mitzvah for everyone to occupy himself with the study of the halachot of Pesach 30 days before the festival, and likewise on the festival itself. Uh, the gloss... It is the practice to purchase wheat to distribute among the poor for their Pesach needs. Whoever has resided in the town for a period of 12 months must contribute to this. Back to point three, it is the practice. This is an early practice which has been followed since the times of the Gemara. The practice is brought in the Talmud Yerushalmi in the first chapter of Baba Batra. The town's inhabitants are able to compel one another to contribute for this matter. And point four, wheat to distribute. In our country, countries, it is the practice to distribute flour to the poor, as the welfare is more readily served by this. The amount given should accord with the poor person's requirements for the entire duration of Pesach. It is self-understood that if he is very poor and does not have the wherewithal to bake the matzah, one must give him also the cost of baking. This is classed as giving him sufficient for his need that he is lacking. Point number five. Sorry, note number five. Twelve months. If we see that someone has entered the town intending to settle there, he is obliged from the outset to contribute to this. This criterion of twelve months is also applicable to the poor person. When he has resided in the town for this period, one is obliged to give him flour for Pesach, just as one might give it to the other poor of the town. If the poor person intends to settle there, they are obliged from the outset to give him flour for Pesach. The Achronim write in the name of the Smak that in the case of all charities, it is now the practice, both with respect to the contributing householder and with respect to the poor person, to wait only 30 days before considering the person an inhabitant of the town. Even when a poor person has not resided there 30 days, we rule that although the inhabitants are not obliged to give him flour for the entire duration of Pesach at once, they are nevertheless obliged to give him matzah on Pesach, just as they are obliged to give him bread on any other day of the year. 
They are therefore obliged to give such a poor person each day sufficient food for two meals for every individual weekday, that he stays in the town and sufficient food for three meals for Shabbat. As stated in the... Excuse me. Point two. One should not fall on his face in supplication at all during the entire month of Nisan. Note number seven. Um, sorry, we'll just go back to note number six about um, contributing to the poor. Point, uh, note number six, contribute to this. This even applies to a Torah scholar who is exempt from tax. The amount that must be contributed must be assessed for each person in accordance with his possessions. Those who evade giving flour to the poor are guilty of iniquity. Now it is well known that the poor look forward to this flour, and if they will remain in pressing need and hungry because of one ignores this, the rebuke of the Gemara stated in Sanhedrin 35a will be applicable to him. What is stated there is common knowledge. On any fast day, see the commentary of Rashi there, the circumstances in this case also correspond to those which the Gemara relates there. Now, uh, back in point two, during the entire month of Nisan. There's no Tachanon. The reason is because on twelve of its days the twelve heads of twelve tri of the twelve tribes brought their offerings, and each day was a Yom Tov for the person who offered that day. In addition, Erev Pesach, the days of Erev Pesach, the days of Pesach itself, and Yisrael Chag are all holy days. Thus, most of the month has holiness, and therefore the entire month is treated as holy. One should not say the verses Tzid Katecha on Shabbat at the Mincha service. The verses Tzid Katecha, note number eight. During the month of Nisan, one should also not say prayer you hear at Psalm, which is said after the reading from the Torah. In addition, the prayer for the remembering of, de of departed souls is not said then, and the service justifying the judgment and the Kaddish after it are also not saying, are also not said. The rule is that the service justifying the judgment, the verses Tzid Katecha and the supplication prayer Rachum V'chanon have the same ruling in this respect. They, they, they are likewise not said on Erev Shabbos or on Erev Yom Tov after midday. However, on Erev, on Erev Rosh Chodesh or Erev Chanukah, the service justifying the judgment is said after midday. It is desirable during the relevant days of Nisan to read each day the passage which describes the, which describes the offering of the particular head who offered that day. On the 13th day, one should read the passage at the beginning of the portion, Bahalotcha, until the words, Ken Ase, Ken Asa Et HaMenorah. Back to the top. One should not eulogize a departed person during Nisan. The people should not fast during Nisan, a fast that is proclaimed to the congregation. However, the first one fast on Erev Pesach, although it falls during Nisan. Note 9. A fast that is proclaimed to the congregation, i.e. the fast should not be proclaimed to the congregation. However, if an individual is accustomed to fast after Yom Tov, the, the fast of Monday, Thursday and Monday, he is permitted to fast them during Nisan according to the views of the author of the Shulchan Aruch. Our practice accords with the view of the Ramah that one should not fast at all during Nisan. Gloss. In addition, during the entire month of Nisan, one should not say the service justifying the judgment. What's the note on that? The note is, footnote is the burial service. It is the practice not to fast However, one does fast a fast during Nisan for a bad dream. Note 10. Even if the day, etc. During the entire month of Nisan, or likewise or on Erev Rosh Chodesh Yah, one should not fast. This even applies to those who are accustomed to fast every Erev Rosh Chodesh. However, if it is the practice for the groom and the bride to fast on the day of their wedding, even if it falls on Rosh Chodesh Nisan, for the reason explained in section 573. Uh, note number 11, however, one does fast for a dream. It is unnecessary for one to observe a fast during the month of Iyar because of this fast that he fasted over his dream for having one month of Nisan. I.e., in this case, they don't respect when one fasts for a dream on Shabbos, Yom Tov, Rosh Chodesh, or Cholam Oed. If one fasted on one of those days, he is required to observe a fast on another day to atone for that fast, as stated in section 418, paragraph 5. If one fasted a fast for a dream on a Shabbos during Nisan, he is permitted to fast on the following day. 
i.e. on Sunday, for having fasted on Shabbos. Says the prohibition to fast during Nisan is no more than practice, even when Rosh Chodesh Nisan falls on a Sunday, and one fasted a dream fast on the Shabbos prior to Rosh Chodesh, he is permitted to observe a fast on Rosh Chodesh Nisan for having fasted on Shabbos. Uh, okay, what we'll do is we'll run through the entire Shulchan Aruch at the top. One does not say the to heal him Mizmo Le Torah, a psalm for the Thanksgiving offering, the prayer Kel Erech Apaim, or the to heal him La Menatzeach, on Erev Pesach, and one also does not say them on Yom Tov. It is the practice to eat and drink a little more on the day following the festival. This day is known as Israel Chag. Mizmo Le Torah. This is because the bread which was brought with the thanksgiving offering was chametz and bidden to bring this offering even on Erev Pesach, since it would have easily become Nosar on Erev Pesach. One should go early to the synagogue on Erev Pesach so that he will finish his meal of chametz before four seasonal hours of the day have passed. Israel Chag, note 14. It is the practice not to fast on Israel Chag. As to whether or not one may impose a prohibitive ban in the synagogue during Nisan. It is permitted to do so when there is a great need, although it is prohibited during Tishrei. Uh, 